Ja tam pracuję.
becomes even greater than it was before, it will be in part because of your love for the city and more importantly, the love for the people. There's no one else I would want. If there could be only one person to speak at the rally today, Robbie, it would be you. Please join me in welcoming a tremendous advocate for the city and the province of the oil patch and the oil itself, Robbie McCoy. Industry. Now, I'm very happy to say that collectively, between Canada Action, uh, Canadian Energy Citizens, and Oil Respect, and my new thing, Oil Stand Strong, we have more members on our social media than Greenpeace and the others combined. But before, before hold that, Ezra. Thank you. I was surprised you didn't offer me some Tim Hortons coffee. <laughs> Now, I have a crush on Sheila Gunnery, very much. <laughs> I know she's married, but there's days. The United Nations, and you can't come. She fought that, and she won. Woohoo! And number three is very personal to me. I went through a bit of a scandal, I don't know if you know, but I made a post about lesbians and oil sands, and I made international news, a cover of all, all kinds of papers. And it wasn't the funnest time for me because even though the press on some hands was okay and even the people trying to shut down the oil sands, I thought it was pretty fair and balanced. But oil prices were high and market access wasn't quite a big deal and they were loving the royalty payments that they were receiving. It's a different story. But now we need to have all our backs. We're not different problems, we're a nation and we need to start acting like that. So I'm here to ask for your help. If you can see the sign that Esther sold this oil stand strong. If you guys could please like my Facebook page because I want to talk about a similar but different fight that I want to rage. As we know, we have two pipelines that have been sort of symbolically approved. However, there is going to be a fight. And the fight is with these so-called environmental organizations. The oil sands industry, you heard that. But here's the story not everyone always talks about. Those 289 businesses employ non-aboriginals and they are Hello. essential to Fort McMurray's survival. So this notion that these pipelines are hurting the aboriginal people... The silence majority needs to speak up and be active. Active on social media, call out the hypocrisy. The fight has just begun. I want to thank everybody and thank you for having me. Robbie Picard! Robbie Picard! Thank you! Woo. Shut down the fur trade. Greenpeace shut down forestry. Greenpeace shut down mining. Gee whiz, it's almost as if Greenpeace doesn't want Aboriginal people to have any jobs, bro. That's right. <laughs> most, of the, most of her cabinet had never even been to Fort McMurray before they were elected. Can you believe that? But if there is one part of Alberta that the NDP hate even more than the oil sands, it's the bedrock of this province for more than a hundred years. I'm talking about the farmers and the ranchers. And so when they brought in Bill 6, the Farm Unionization Act, they brought it in with a merciless vigor. They hated farmers and ranchers because... Okay, Last year, I was here, a year ago almost, and I was speaking about Bill 6. The horrendous bill that was bringing unions into the farming and ranching community. We've had a feedlot closed down, Western Feedlots, which is Canada's largest feedlot in the country. They blamed the government's bad policies, Bill 6, the carbon tax, and low commodity prices. When you look at the climate leadership plan, there is no real risk assessment for agriculture. In reality, there's no risk assessment for any part by 10% for the agriculture industry. That's an incredible number and we do not run on large margins. We don't have them. When I take my ca calf crop to auction, I cannot tell the auction market that they have to sell my calf crop for $2,800 per head. I don't know what I get for those ca calves when I take them in for slaughter. I don't get to tell the grain elevators that I'm selling my wheat for $5 a bushel. I don't have that ability. So 
Sometimes it'll go for two dollars, sometimes it'll go for less, sometimes it'll go for more. So we really have no ability to pass this 10% on to anyone. Okay. Now you have to take into consideration that that's trucking from the farm to the auction, from the auction to the feedlot, from the feedlot to the packing plant. That adds up quick, doesn't it? So the government gave us a $10 million increase to programs that help boost our energy efficiency. Because we want to support our fellow Canadians, our fellow Albertans, in pr providing food for their family in every way. Where am I coming out with you?